about the camera? When did you realize the, the power of the camera? Well, that's the secondary question. The primary question is when was I influenced? I was influenced in the arts early on because at, I think, 12 or 13, I had been inducted into a gang called the Bishops from Brooklyn, which was an all-black gang. I was the only non-black in the gang. And in a year and a half, I became the warlord. And not far from where I lived was the Brooklyn Museum. And I went there to keep from getting killed in the streets. And the Brooklyn Museum, I went there just to hide, just to get away from the, the violence and the craziness and four white boys kicking my ass every day. And in there, I was exposed to everything. By the time, within a year or two, I met Salvador Dali. And I realized that, God, art is magic, man. Art can do things a gun can't do, or a Molotov cocktail, or a revolutionary dialogue. It can literally trans the culture and transform us. And I think hip hop has that transformer. So, I left home, I was homeless, by 14, I was in Greenwich Village. And I met this other homeless man, had no teeth, smelled like he hadn't taken a shower in a month, had no money between us, we had maybe 25 cents. Well, he went on to be a legend. His name is Richie Havens, and we just lost him a year ago on Earth Day. Richie Havens is probably one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. He taught me how to draw because at that time he was making money doing drawings on the corner of people portraits. So the camera was a way for me to do instantly what I had been doing with brushes and charcoal and all of that. So I began that at the age of 13 in 1961. And I picked up the camera to answer his question so I don't go too far afield. In 1971, and instantly, magic happened because hip hop opened its door to me. Because I was so big, they thought I was a cop. So the graffiti artists would run away, and I would have all these walls to photograph. So it's 1971. And I met and became part of hip hop. And by the way, he'll tell you on uh, May 19th, I'm being inducted into the Hip Hop Hall of Fame. Which is a huge honor, and I accept it humbly. Sugar Hill Gang, uh, different people are being inducted, the Mercedes ladies, different, different people. But <coughs> my biggest honor, and I doubt that there will ever be an honor that can trump that, was in November of 2013, last year, Africa Bambada and the Universal Zulu Nation gave me the Human Soul Award for my efforts on behalf of Hippo. That's the greatest award in the whole world. The first hip hop organization. Whoops, let's sit back. It's looking, Ernie looking real sexy over here. <laughs> Ernie, you're, you're from a uh, Cree background. Your indigenous values come through in everything that you do. <coughs> How has that informed your lens on hip hop and, and, and our conversations that I've heard you have before? The true spirit of, you know, hip -hop. We're, we're celebrating 40 years, and I say that in quotes, because this obviously began well before 40 years. Can you speak on that? Everybody believes that hip hop. Everybody believes that hip hop began in 1974. And this being 2014, hello Joseph, they look at hip hop as 40 years old. As a member of the Universal Zulu Nation, there are those who follow dogma very religiously, I do not. 
hip hop is way older than 40 years. And anybody who's been to any of my lectures knows how old it is. <laughs> elements are indigenous elements that have always been with us forever. Oh, they didn't have MCs, they had storytellers. Well, they didn't have DJs, they had drummers. Well, they didn't have graffiti artists, they had sand paintings, they had sculpture, they had wood carving, they had totems, and I could go deep. Well, I damn sure didn't have B-Boy. Oh yeah, have you ever been to a bower? Have you ever seen this dance? <laughs> and the fifth element is traditionally native which is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And Bambada, because he's so brilliant, added another one to it. It's called, and having fun. And why do you think a serious brother like Africa Bambada would have add and having fun? The truth is, if you're having fun, you're not hurting anybody. We're having fun tonight. We're not hurting anybody. We may be hurting some of your preconceptions and may be hurting some of your what is it? The, the, the dogma? This is what hip hop is. This is what, you know, no, no, no. This is what gender is. This is what uh, race, you know. So I may be hurting some of those concepts, <coughs> those stereotypes. But I hope that we're not hurting anything else. And if anyone wants to hurt anything, I'm qualified. <laughs> I want to go right into that. I want to hurt some people right now. So. I am hip hop. This is a shirt that you rock proudly. What is hip hop to you? I, and I want to set this foundation before we go into the photographs. We haven't even, I haven't showed your photographs yet. I want to give the context of your philosophy and your, your overstanding of this situation before we go into the actual photographs. In the Universal Zulu Nation, we're taught that hip hop is a culture. And I think that most hip hop heads, those people who profoundly love hip hop will say it's a culture. Because I am who I am, I say hip hop is not a culture. And even the Supreme World Council of Zulu never challenged me on that. And even Africa Bambada never challenged me on that. Hip hop is an assemblage of street art forms. The umbrella that goes over it is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It is not a culture. As reggae <coughs> is not a culture. Reggae is a reflection of Rastafarian culture. Hip hop is a reflection originally of black New York culture and then it expanded, but it is not a culture unto itself. And there are those of you who are profoundly more educated than I am who, who will, you know, dissect and parse the word culture. It is not a culture. It has cultural artifacts, it has cultural touches, and it has cultural flavor, but it is not a culture in itself. Judaism, Christianity, the Mayans, the Aztec, etc., are cultures. Rastafara is a culture. Hip hop is not a culture. Keep that in mind. That's one of the jewels that I'm dropping tonight. So go flow with that jewel. Anyone want to jump in? I'm going to keep moving into the song right now. And, uh... <coughs> This is a, a big track right here. Well, they're 74 years old in that picture. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Funky drum. Shade. Go. What's going on at this time? And, and this picture, like, what's tell us around? Not now. We're into Ernie's pictures. So some of these you'll see in the exhibit upstairs. Some of them you won't. Africa Ben Bada, I gotta keep bringing him up because he is what we call. That he was called the godfather of hip hop. And the reason he doesn't use that title is because the godfather was a movie and people identified with the mafia and because there is a certain person who should know better who called Russell Simmons the godfather of hip hop. So 
Brother Van Vada said, I'm going to call myself the Amun Ra of hip hop and see if anybody steals that. <laughs> and just for your, just as a side note, Brother Africa Van Vada is also part, part of the Moorish Empire. And he is deep on levels that makes me often feel like a young child around him. And in my movie, The Other Side of Hip Hop, The Sixth Element, he says that I taught him, and he taught me, and we taught each other, and the Supreme Force sent me to him and him to me so that we could build and we could teach and we could grow and sharpen one another because there's an expression that says, steel sharpens <laughs> steel as men sharpen men. And that is very, very real. And we have a no, we have a whole generation now of young people that are not men. We have a generation of women that are not women. Because to be a woman or to be a man means that you reach a certain maturity. And I know there are 40 year old men that go to clubs and act like they're 17. It's like that group's name, Arrested Development. It's okay to act 17 when you're 17, <laughs> not when you're 40. So around this time, tell, tell me the story around this image. How did this image come Africa from? Africa Bambada did a song with him called Peace, Love, Unity, and Having Fun. And it's one of the dopest songs you're ever going to hear. James Brown, without James Brown, there would be no hip hop in, in the rap genre of hip hop. And this was just before he passed, and I think he was 71, 74, something. And he's so powerful. And he did a one and a half hour show, and I think it was about 100 degrees that day. And ain't nobody like him. Ain't gonna be nobody like him. He was a small, dark, not very good looking man. <laughs> Illiterate also. And by the time he was an adult, he owned like 40 radio stations. And I think he did 12 albums a year and he performed 300 days a year. And he created new genres of music. I remember sitting in the back of a limo with him, listening to him for an hour. Tell me about George how poor he was. So, I, I can't even begin to tell you my respect for this man, but like me, he believed that there's nothing <laughs> and no one that can stop you from developing as a spirit, as a human being, as an entity, and as your full potential. There's nothing. And if anyone in this whole fucking planet did what I did against the odds that were in front of me, then any of you can do it. Trust me. So this is a powerful image. And now it's a powerful <coughs> image, but it touches me powerfully because he's such an incredible brother. If you leave here with nothing else, do a study on the life of James Brown. Don't Google it. Google is, is like it shrinks your brain each time you use it. Go to the library or dig out or, or just check out who this man was and what he did. Never mind all that crap where they chased him and found out he was smoking this or that. That's all bullshit. Find out about how a man went from being poor, hungry, homeless, illiterate, short, black, ugly, all the other shit that they put on us as this and that, and how he became such a powerful global force. Shit, I think they're listening to his music on other planets, but that's just my take on it. 